Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Vivid webinar around ALM Jira and beyond. We will be focusing on the topic of reporting across teams and tools through synchronization without the need for alignment. Today's SIG talk is sponsored by Vivid Software Lifecycle Integration Special Interest Group leaders, Jeff Downs and Matt Onderer. Jeff Downs is a pre-sales engineer at Tasktop Technologies. Recently, he received the Leader of the Year Award for reviving the software lifecycle integration talks. He's hosted multiple webinars, coordinated Vivid Roundtable discussions at HPE Discover, and worked together with several LUG leaders to support their groups. Matt Unger is also a solution architect at Tasktop Technologies with 15 plus years of experience with ERP, Agile, software startups, and IT software delivery experience. He, his roles have included solution architect, product owner, and test manager. Today, I am your host. My name is Zoe Smith. I am also a pre-sales engineer working at Tasktop Technologies with both Jeff and Matt. I come from a background working at Hewlett Packard Microfocus Software, focusing on our ALM suite of solutions. Today's speaker is going to be Tina Dankwart, and she sits on the same team as me. She's going to talk a little bit more about herself as we get into the webinar in a few minutes. So now for some quick housekeeping. Today's live session is intended for all Vivint mem members. The on-demand recording, slide deck, and questions and answers will be posted on the Vivint website and visible for all members afterwards. Additionally, today's slide deck questions and answer answers will be made available to you, and we will send that to you via a link in email once they are posted on that website. If you have questions as we go along, please type them and send them in using the questions pane in the webinar control panel. This next slide shows you specifically how you can do that. This is a picture of the go to webinar control panel that usually appears in the upper right hand corner of your screen. To submit a question, make sure the questions pane is expanded and type in your question and then click on send. So with that, let's get started and I will pass it over to Tina. Thank you, Zoe, and thank you everyone one for coming. Um, Zoe's already introduced me a little bit, but um, just to give you a bit of background as to why this topic is particularly close to my heart, I spent 14 years uh, working for, well, I started with Mercury, supporting Test Director 7.6, so quite a long time ago. We were then bought by HP, um, then HPE Microfocus. Um, my time there I spent in SaaS. Uh, my speciality, uh, my special speciality was reporting mostly in ALM, so originally Test Director, then Quality Center, and finally ALM. I'm hoping you will take away from this um, a different perception and a different approach on how we tackle the problem around uh, cross-team, cross-project, cross-tool reporting. Traditionally, the approach was always to standardize, so either bring everybody into the same project, into the same tool, um, and I would like to show you how you can use synchronization in order to do that more easily. So, once upon a time, about 10 years ago, um, I was confronted with the following. So, one of our largest clients in EMEA um, approached me to create some reports. They had only one QC instance, so that doesn't sound so bad, but they had around 400 different projects, and each one of these projects had been given the task to add fields um, for likelihood of failure and impact of failure. Now, every project did this on their own, and you can see here are some examples of what that looked like. I don't think I've ever seen as many spellings of likelihood or hugely likely, and they all did their own thing. And so I was tasked with reporting across these 400 projects on some of these items. So the reports they wanted were um, along the lines of, you know, are the tests executed in the right order? So really what they wanted, of course, was to execute the tests first that had a high impact and high likelihood. And what they found, the quality output was poor. So they just wanted to know. But of course, with all this variation in all the list values, it was a complete nightmare for me to pull out that sort of information. Once I'd done that one, they then wanted to know, well, actually, were these tests actually classified correctly? And they did this by correlating tests with defects 
um, you know, were, were the most, the highest impact tests actually raising the highest impact defects, the more likely ones you would expect them to raise more defects and so on. And actually a really silly question, but were the tests actually being executed? To our great surprise, they actually weren't. So um, all of this, the, we did this at first by uh, me creating some Excel scripts to try and pull the data out. Um, complete nightmare, as you can imagine. It took me a very long time because I would have to massage the data and try and align and try and decide what goes with what and so on. And because of that, we then decided this was a pretty bad idea because the lead time for every report whenever they wanted something else was weeks rather than days or hours even. So um, th what we decided then was aligning and there were two different things. One is align the customizations or even put them all into one project which um, has its own problems. Uh, you might know that if you have a, an ALM project that is over a terabyte in data, it's, it's not great, right? So there were some other issues. So in some cases, it was actually not possible because some of these projects were actually owned by different suppliers. So there was absolutely no way that we could align them or force them to use different processes or different naming conventions. Once we changed the list values, we then had to change all of the data that was already in the fields. And the issue with that is, of course, that if you do that via the GUI, you're changing the last modified date, which is obviously not great. So we had to go and do this directly on the database, which is um, tedious, it's error prone, it's dangerous, and it's actually not supported either. We had a lot of pushbacks from the team. So they're trying to get on with their day-to-day -day work and you're getting them to like take time out and, and change the values and tell me about what should this be and so on. It was a nightmare and it was expensive because we had to build new instances in some cases. We had to do retraining. Um, so yeah, a very expensive undertaking and it was disruptive as well. So we needed downtime. In some cases we tried to move data around and so on. and. Um, Clearly, nobody has got time. If they're in the middle of a test cycle, the last thing they're worried about is whether you know their project data matches the other person's project data. The other question is, does it even make sense to align them? So in some cases, they might need to have additional information. So they might have added three extra statuses, which they absolutely need. They don't want to be aligned. They need to have that for their own internal reports, but it makes the global reporting, obviously, very difficult. It can feel like painting the fourth rail bridge. So for anyone here who's not British, the fourth rail bridge, um, the issue with it is it has a lot of material and it's famous for being constantly painted because by the time it takes them so long to paint it, by the time they get to the end, they have to start again from the beginning. And then things got worse. So originally we had one instance and then um, what happened was they outsourced to a different company and they weren't using ALM, they were using JIRA. And also we found that we were now running several instances of QC um, on different versions and there were different versions for different reasons. So for example, we had one instance that had to run an old version of Quality Center in order to align with a particular team that had a particular version of QTP which wouldn't run with that particular uh, version of or a newer version of ALM. We had with a different customer, we had the issue that they actually were using Windows 98, unbelievable, but um, we then couldn't upgrade them because the clients wouldn't run on it. All data in some cases meant that certain projects couldn't be upgraded or were tedious to upgrade or would require a lot of downtime. And since they, this was usually the largest ones are also the busiest ones, so we couldn't take it down, so upgrading it was hard. Other reasons on why you might have different instances as well as different projects is different suppliers. So um, you might have outsourcing to three different suppliers. They're not supposed to talk to each other. So the, the sort of siloing is actually deliberate. They're not, you know, but you need to share the defects. Different geographical locations. Again, a different client um, who had a different office. And it's, this is quite a common thing, but you have a different office, one in Germany, one in France, one's, one in the States, one in Singapore. And of course, then Agile came along and team preference. So empowering your team, they should be allowed to do whatever makes them most efficient. But that was me pulling my hair out, trying to then report across the board of all of these. The answer synchronization. So um, 
I came across the ALM synchronizer at some point because I was through a problem of alignment with everybody going in the same project. I was faced with pulling apart some giant projects. And whilst I was working on that, it occurred to me that actually I could use the synchronizer to solve my problem of having to report and constantly having to, to realign everything. And so what I did is I created a defect database. Now I just used an ALM project it's a read-only project um, and I just had one user who had access to it, which is my reporting user. And then I created, if you like, lots of pieces of string to each one of the projects, be that Jira, be that any QC, any of the different QC instances and the QC servers and for each of the projects. And during synchronization already, so I'm pulling everything into my defect database and I'm normalizing the data as I go. So I'm not hammering the projects and of course everything is ready aligned and normalized in my defect database. The advantages of that, um, for, first of all, and most importantly, virtually no, no lead times. So whenever um, the CIO in this company came along and said, look, I, I really need, you know, we need to understand the, the quality output. Why is this not working? Why is this, you know, why is that outsourcing company doing better? telling them that, yeah, okay, I'll get you that data, but in sort of four weeks, it's just not acceptable. And now suddenly I had it all there and already, and so I could produce new reports in with virtually no lead time at all. Um, no hammering of projects for reports. Now that is important if you have large projects, so if you've ever tried running complex SQL on, on the projects, the, the project users are not gonna thank you for it. So um, also, of course, there was no downtime required, no retraining, no input from the teams. We had no new servers, nothing at all. And it was very easy to set up. It was a bit tedious because I had to go and you know, create, obviously, the mapping for each project. But once I've done that, um, it, was, it was there and it was running. And so um, also no cooperation from the team. And, and that was a really important one. They could get on with their work. I don't have to you know, delay projects or anything. I can just pull the data and um, without their input. And of course, what we achieved then was the agile principle of empowering the teams. They can use whatever tool they wanted, whatever customizations they wanted, processes, whatever makes them most efficient or most happy for that matter. Um, one thing to mention, enterprise level integration. As we scale that, um, there are a few things to consider. So um, an even easier way to do this is to use models during the synchronization. So rather than creating lots of strings um, with for each project, um, you can use a model, which is a company-wide or a global definition of your artifact. Now an artifact could be a defect, it could be a test, it could be a requirement and you just sit down and decide once and for all what that should look like, effectively like a template, and then you connect the strings for each one of your instances to the model, and you can drag and drop projects onto it, which makes it a lot easier. The other thing to consider is I used an ALM project, and that is fine to a point. As I said earlier, um, one of the issues, like ALM projects don't like it very much once you grow them over one terabyte in size. So it's it's not an ideal database. It's fine on a smaller scale, and I did do it. But in some cases, you might want to use um, an, an independent database, um, also in terms of performance. And um, this is like a size question. You then also have different reporting options. So, so you could put Tableau on it, and it's tool agnostic. So you could do QC, Jira, RTC, whatever it is. Um, you are not dependent on your reporting on one particular tool. What's next? So um, I'd like to show you what this looks like in real life, and then I'd like to give you some time for some Q&A. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, and just to quickly go into what the model thing means, so you can see here I've connected Jira and uh, ALM. And if we look at the models, then you can see that the models are all defect. This is my model that sits in the middle between Jira and ALM and also even ALM to itself. The model is always called defect, and in there I have defined exactly, you know, all my lists, all my values, all my fields, my field types, and then I'm connecting ALM to the model, rather than doing um, pieces of string between each project, and it also helps when you're upgrading one of them, then it is no longer depend, they're not dependent on each other. So you could have three versions of Jira running at the same time, you update one of them, all the other connections are not affected because you've effectively 
connected JIRA to the model rather than JIRA directly to ALM, say. So, I have created here a defect database within ALM. Um, but like I said, you could do that externally, you could do it in JIRA, whatever you, you would prefer, but um, this is what this would look like. This is my one project. I then have connected um, two projects to this, so I'm going to create a defect in here. Hopefully. So I'm just going to call this uh, defect from project one. Not very creative. I'm going to select a severity and also this particular team has priority completely standard but they've been a bit creative on their statuses so what they've done here is they they want all these extra and this is what i was saying earlier there could be a really good reason why you want eight different statuses so they might have had you know just this particular project has an issue with you know reopening so what they've done is they've, they've created fixed and fixed again and never reproduced for different reasons for why a defect was closed and for them that makes perfect sense for me if i want to report across the board i only want five statuses so for me this is a nightmare but for the team this makes perfect sense right so i'm going to submit that one so now I'm, this is my second project and in this second project i have gone and created the customization slightly differently. So I'm going to type in here, doesn't matter, project two, fill in my fields. But these guys, they didn't like the priorities that were given maybe they came from a different version or even they were integrated from a different so their priorities they've completely renamed them so they have their urgent and capital and they, they just went for sort of urgent not quite so urgent so this is what we're going to select there and then we're going to post that and just to make matters interesting we're going to go into JIRA and we're going to create something um, bug from JIRA 2 and of course JIRA's um, definitions are completely different so they're, they're not not even if you chose the ones out of the box will they look anything like the ones you had in ALM so oops. right so you can see here that they are completely different definitions and I'm going to go here for lowest, which doesn't match, of course. Right, so if I go back into my, if I go back into my um, defect database, we can see here, hopefully if I can manage to scroll down. Here they are here now so it has now automatically in near real time so this runs every five seconds or so you can set that up depending um, in here I have collected all of my defects in one now I've added a few little pieces here that might be of interest so what I've done here is um, I have added the project from which it came so I've got my project one project two um, and my JIRA um, item here so that I know where it came from so my reports this might be important for my reporting and I've also made it easier by putting a link in here and synchronizing in the link so I can click on the link and then find exactly where it came from right and now of course it's all in here it's all normalized you can see here it's just taken the priorities and the status it is always going to be one of five because I've done the mapping once and once it's done it will do this and then I can create my reports on here and that's pretty much it. So if we go back to, oops, there we go. Um, any questions? Yeah, 
this. <clears throat> One of the questions was, will this work on ALM SAS? Yes, yes it will. So um, we did do this on ALM SAS. So uh, you definitely can, depending on um, which synchronizer you're using, you can definitely go and uh, connect it with either within SAS or um, to the outside world as well. On, so we have synchronized, for example, SAS with in-house instances as well. Second question is, is it also possible to map user list fields like assigned to and detected by? We have yes. different active directory, Jira and ALM, and user accounts doesn't match and doesn't contain the same users. Yes, excellent question. So yes, you can. So depending, again, this is um, depending on how your synchronization tool works. Um, with uh, some, some of the synchronization tools can and others cannot handle them. So there are ways um, to either use uh, dummy users, to use scripts in order to assign users. So that very much depends on the tool that you're using. How about ALM Octane? Yes, you can add ALM Octane as well. Again, it depends on your synchronization tool. But yes, there are some out there that can connect up to 60 tools. So. Then how do you handle the attachments of defects? Um, I think most synchronizers can synchronize attachments. So um, yes, definitely you can synchronize them as well. Depending, I mean, you want to consider whether for your reporting you want the attachments, right? So in some cases it will make sense, um, you know, if you wanted to report on them. But for most reports and for sizing, for questions of sizing, it might make sense to not synchronize them, but you could if you wanted. Any other questions? One of them is, why don't you just use the ALM functionality of cross-project customization to push out alignment? Ah, right, very good question. So um, it is, if you're starting from scratch, when you build your project, and of course, if you're only using ALM and you only have one instance, then um, that makes sense. But uh, retrofitting it um, can be very difficult, especially if you're dealing with very old data. So um, it can be quite complicated because you have to move some of the fields and it doesn't change the data that has already been selected. All it does is it will change the list values. So from that moment going forward, it will be aligned, but it cannot align the old data that already exists. Will this work with custom created defect management tool created by my own company? In some cases, yes, it depends on what you have. Um, but as a general rule, <laughs> I keep saying this, but <laughs> it depends on the tool that you're using. So ALM synchronizer cannot do that necessarily, um, but there are ways of doing it with some tools, yes. ALM has a limitation of not accepting files with the same name. How is this handled with a synchronizer? So, um, yeah, so, so here, um, Hub can certainly handle it, but yes, you have to check with your tool, whichever you're using, whether or not um, it can deal with files having the same name. So in some cases that will fail. But again, you want to consider whether you want to synchronize attachments, you want to give consideration as to the space used and that, whether that is actually, whether it actually makes sense. What synchronizer tool are you recommending? The ALM synchronizer has been a little bit problematic. <laughs> I really don't think I am supposed to answer that sort of question, but I'm sure you could get in touch with me and I'm sure I could recommend one. <laughs> Same question as the next one, which synchronizer tool would you recommend? <laughs> um, then tell us the cost range for the synchronizer tool. Does this one project become very huge when you're pulling the data from multiple projects? Yes, so this is definitely something you want to consider. So if you're using, say, ALM in order to do this, then you want to consider what the injection rate of defects is. Now, defects, again, so then don't synchronize the attachments. And if you're synchronizing 
hundreds of defects every day, I would highly recommend to look for an enterprise solution that allows you to synchronize into an external database rather than using the product itself to do the reporting. Um, it depends on, on what you're synchronizing, obviously. So, But yes, it can, definitely. Can you provide synchronization that works both ways, creating JIRA bugs and, and ALM defects and ALM defects and JIRA bugs? Do changes to existing defects bugs flow in both directions? Yes, so you definitely can do that too. So it's not quite the concept of a defect database in that way, but for reporting purposes, in some cases, you could, um, actually in a lot of cases, but you can, of course, synchronize directly between between the projects or the tools, and you can do it in, in both directions. In the case, so, so some of the projects, uh, some of the problems I was facing was that the two projects weren't supposed to talk to each other. So if you have different suppliers, but you have one developer team and you don't really want those suppliers to talk to each other, then you obviously wouldn't want to do bi-directional synchronization. Um, between those tools, you would just want to do a one-directional um, into the defect database. Fantastic. Well, that any more questions? That's the last that I see in the question. Oh, one more. Do you synchronize also with ITSM slash heat and or service now? Um, that again depends on your tool, but yes, there are definitely some tools that can do that. And the last question that I see from a few different people on here also is wondering our contact information. We will offer that. I'll put that in the chat window in a moment as Tina will wrap us up in a second. It will also be in the webinar information that we send out. I will make sure that that is included um, as well. If not, please also visit us at tasktop.com to learn more about our synchronization technology. Um, and so I'm going to ask the last question, and then Tina, I will have you start wrapping it up. Mm -hmm. um, have you tried to move Tosca into ALM? Ah, so we're talking migration. Um, so that's a that's a really difficult question. Um, no, is the answer to that, and it is not certainly not something we do. Um, you certainly could run them in parallel. So, so Tosca and ALM, for example, um, you could run them in, in parallel, but in general, um, we don't really do migrations. It's not really something I've spent a lot of time on, if I'm honest. Okay. Um, so I think that's it from me. So if you guys can just take the time and complete the short survey so we as Vivid leaders can better serve you in the future, you can go to www.vivid-worldwide.org. Again, the recording will be available to you. We will make sure that contact information is included in that as well. Um, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for attending today. Thank you very much.